This is a video on how to diagnose adnexal masses using IOTA terminology, simple descriptors and simple rules. My name is Dr Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. IOTA stands for International Ovarian Tumour Analysis Group. This was founded in 1999 by Professors Timmerman, Valentin and Bourne. This team developed standardised terminology for the description of adnexal masses and correlated appearance with histology. They later created simple rules and mathematical models to predict the risk of malignancy in adnexal masses according to ultrasound appearance. This is the original IOTA paper from 2000 and I strongly urge you to read this paper. How to implement the IOTA system? This is my interpretation of the published literature and any potential errors are mine. The images shown here have supporting histology after biopsy or excisional surgery. Being able to use this system requires some practice, but will result in a greater ability to predict whether an ovarian lesion is benign or malignant, and the actual histology. During the presentation I will cover this classification system for ovarian pathology, standardization of terminology, iota simple descriptors, iota simple rules, some worked examples, and a quiz. An adnexal mass is a mass near the uterus which is inconsistent with normal physiology. How you report on this mass is very important, whether it's benign or malignant. Previously reports would simply say whether it's a simple cyst or a complex cyst, but I think we can do better. For example, how to report this abnormality. It may look difficult, but by the end of this presentation you will be able to report this. So the classification system for ovarian pathology covers benign ovarian, benign non-ovarian, primary malignant ovarian and secondary malignant ovarian masses. Among benign ovarian masses we include polycystic ovaries, functional cysts, endometriomas, serous cystadenoma, mucinous cystadenoma, mature teratoma, a fibroma and a thecoma. In benign non-ovarian masses, paratubal cyst, hydrosalpinges, tuber ovarian abscess, peritoneal pseudocysts, appendiceal abscess, diverticular abscess and pelvic kidney. Primary malignant ovarian lesions uh, are in three categories, epithelial carcinoma, germ cell tumour and sex cord tumour. Within the group of epithelial carcinoma there is borderline, serous cystadenocarcinoma, mucinous cystadenocarcinoma, endometrioid carcinoma and clear cell carcinoma. Amongst the germ cell tumours we include malignant teratoma and dysgerminoma and sex cord tumour would include granulosa cell tumour. Secondary malignant ovarian masses are around 10% of all ovarian malignancies and predominantly are from the breast or gastrointestinal carcinoma, also called Krukenberg tumour. IOTA standardisation of terminology. The IOTA group standardised all terminology so that we all talk about the same thing. They developed some terms and definitions and it's important to realise that this was all developed using transvaginal ultrasound and this is indeed how you should scan the adnexal mass you're needing to describe. Again, this is the paper from 2000, which is uh, essential reading. A mass would be described as being either unilocular, unilocular solid, multilocular, multilocular solid or solid. The cyst contents are described as being anechoic, low level, ground glass, hemorrhagic or mixed. You then describe whether there is any solid material or papillary structures or wall irregularity any vascularity, notice any shadowing, and ascites. Taking these criteria one at a time, locularity, what does this mean? This is a unilocular cyst, it's a single cystic structure. This is a unilocular cyst with some solid material and that therefore makes this unilocular solid. This is a multilocular lesion with more than one cystic structure. If there's any solid material present, that makes this multilocular solid. 
and this would be an entirely solid lesion and for a solid lesion around 80% of it needs to be solid up to 20% can be a cystic component. How to describe the cyst contents? We look at the echogenicity of the cyst contents, whether it's anechoic, which is entirely black, low-level echogenicity, where you have some homogeneous low-level echoes like mucin, ground glass echogenicity, which is homogeneously dispersed echoes as in an endometrioma, hemorrhagic with some fibrin threads or clot, or mixed, where the echogenicity is variable, like in a dermoid or an abscess. Here are some examples, anechoic, low-level, ground glass, hemorrhagic or mixed. Anechoic, no echoes there. Low-level, few. Ground glass, dense echogenicity. Hemorrhagic, some fibrin threads, sometimes you see it like a spider's web appearance. And mixed, where there is a difference between the echogenicity of the cyst contents. Solid material and papillations. A solid component is a structure that has echogenicity suggestive of tissue, but there are some exclusions that are important. The white ball of a dermoid is not solid tissue, and blood clot or mucin is not solid tissue. A papillary projection is a protrusion of three millimeters or more in height from the cyst wall this therefore also counts as a solid component. If the lesion protrudes for less than three millimeters, it counts as an irregularity. An irregularity means either an irregular internal cyst wall or an irregular outer contour of a solid lesion. And we'll go through some examples in a moment. These are papillations, solid material. It's vascular, which proves that it's solid, but of course solid lesions don't have to be vascular. And this is solid material, which is not a papillation. Vascularity. The vascularity of a lesion is determined using colour Doppler. It's important to set the right sensitivities. So we use a PRF of 0.3, which is equivalent to a velocity scale of 3 to 6 centimetres per second. A balance of 220. And then you adjust the Doppler gain to just below the artefact level. No flow is counted as one, so there's really no flow at all. Minimal flow, where you really have to look for it, counts as two. Moderate flow, where you look and there is flow, is three. And strong flow throughout the lesion or in one area is four. This is quite subjective, but you will see how useful this turns out to be. Vascularity scores one, no flow. Bottom left, you'll see just a little bit of flow when you've really had to look for it. Three, the flow is just present. And four, it's strong flow in one particular area. Shadowing. It's important to look for shadowing. We've become rather used to ignoring shadowing as artifact. But when you're describing an anexal lesion, it's very important to look for shadowing. So behind this lesion, you can see dense shadowing. Whereas, look at the blue arrow, there's just some subtle shadowing behind this lesion. Very important to take note of it. Ascites. The de definition of ascites is fluid outside of the pouch of Douglas, which means fluid above the level of the uterine fundus. So in the left side of the image you can see the uterine fundus and then a little bit of fluid just above it. Whereas in the view on the right hand side, there is extensive ascites there, seen on a transabdominal view of the pelvis. Iota simple descriptors. This is really pattern recognition. And this again is a very important paper that I recommend to you. Sometimes when you're scanning, certain abnormalities are really obvious. This is called pattern recognition. Examples of this are endometrioma, a benign cystic teratoma or a dermoid, a simple cyst or cyst adenoma, a functional cyst like a hemorrhagic cyst, or a malignant tumour with ascites. An endometrioma described using iota criteria would be a unilocular lesion with ground glass echogenicity in a premenopausal woman. A benign cystic teratoma or dermoid would be described as a unilocular lesion with mixed echogenicity and acoustic shadows in a premenopausal woman. 
A simple cyst or cyst adenoma is a unilocular anechoic lesion with regular walls and a maximum diameter of less than 10 centimetres. A functional cyst like a hemorrhagic cyst are the remaining unilocular lesions with regular walls. You have to be aware that if there is any solid material there that would make this unilocular solid whereas here we're talking about unilocular lesions. This simple descriptor is a malignant descriptor and describes a malignant tumour with ascites. That's where you can see a, a tumour with ascites and at least moderate colour blood flow a score of three or four in a postmenopausal woman. And on the left, you can see an irregular solid lesion with strong blood flow. And on the right hand side, you can see extensive ascites. If the mass is not instantly recognizable and simple descriptors don't apply, then apply simple rules. This paper was published in 2008 and is an excellent paper which I again urge you to read. The BMJ cited this paper, and I'll let you read this, what's already known about this topic and what this study adds. The features of a benign mass are called benign features. And this would be a unilocular cyst. If there is a solid component, but the largest diameter of it is less than seven millimeters, the presence of acoustic shadows. If the mass is smooth and multilocular, less than 100 millimeters. And if there's no blood flow, a color score of one. Features of a malignant mass are the M features. This would be if the mass is solid and irregular, the presence of ascites, if there are at least four papillary structures, if the mass is irregular and multilocular solid greater than 100 millimeters, or if there is strong blood flow, a color score of four. Those are the features. The simple rules are that if there are one or more malignant features and no benign features, the mass is malignant. If there are one or more benign features and no malignant features, the mass is benign. If there are both malignant features and benign features, or no benign and no malignant features, the result is inconclusive and a second stage test is recommended. So here are some examples for how we can apply this. What you should do is copy the next three slides and then look at the mass and describe it first using IOTA criteria. Look to see whether any simple descriptors apply. Is it obvious what kind of a mass this is? If it's not obvious, then apply simple rules. Decide whether the mass is benign, uncertain or malignant and suggest a histology. So you need to pause the video and copy this. Pause the video and copy this. Pause the video and copy this. You can use this to tick off how many benign and malignant features there are. In this first example, this is a unilocular cyst with ground glass echogenicity in a premenopausal woman. So on simple descriptors, this is an endometrioma. On simple descriptors, this is unilocular with mixed echogenicity, shadowing in a premenopausal woman, and this is a dermoid. This mass is unilocular, anechoic, with regular walls, less than 10 centimeters, and on simple descriptors, this was a serous cystadenoma. Describing this cyst, it's unilocular with regular walls and it was a hemorrhagic cyst. This is a tumour with at least moderate blood flow, ascites in a postmenopausal woman. So on simple descriptors, this was ovarian carcinoma. But simple descriptors don't always apply, so that's when you need simple rules. So here are some examples again. 
this cyst is less than 10 centimeters, have a look at it, describe it using IOTA criteria, and then see whether it fits simple descriptors. Describing the lesion, it is multilocular with low level echogenicity, no solid material, some minor vascularity, no shadowing, and no ascites. So the simple descriptors do not apply. So how do simple rules fit in? Well, it has one benign feature. It is smooth, multilocular, less than 10 centimeters. There are no malignant features. And so on simple rules, it's benign. And this was a mucinous cystadenoma. So here's another example. Have a look at this. Describe it using the terminology. See if it's obvious and otherwise apply simple rules. On iota description, it's a solid lesion. It has strong vascularity, no shadowing, no ascites. The simple descriptors do not apply. On simple rules, it's malignant because it's an irregular solid lesion with strong blood flow. There were no benign features, so it must be malignant. And it was malignant. It was a metastasis from a bowel primary. Here's another example. Have a look at this. How would you describe it? Is it obvious? Otherwise, apply simple rules. In description, this is unilocular solid because it's a unilocular lesion but with some solid material, so it's unilocular solid and a coexist contents. There was one papillary structure, there was some vascularity, no shadowing and no ascites. So it's not obvious on simple descriptors. On simple rules, there are no benign features, there are no malignant features, so it's uncertain. And this was a borderline ovarian tumour. The reason that that solid material is called a papillation is because it has a, a height into the cyst of 9 millimeters, so it's greater than 3 millimeters. The reason it doesn't um, warrant a benign feature is because the maximum diameter is 17 millimeters, not less than 7. So here's a quiz. And again, look at the mass and describe it using the criteria. Apply simple descriptors, then apply simple rules, decide whether it's benign, uncertain or malignant, and suggest a histology. Are you ready to start the quiz? You just need to pause the video when you need time to look at something. This is a lesion in a premenopausal woman and it's less than 10 centimetres in diameter. This is a different lesion. Again, look to see how you would describe it. Is it obvious what it is? Otherwise, apply simple rules. Here is another example. The image on the right is with some color Doppler, so you can judge the vascularity. Here's another example. It's less than 10 centimetres, and I'll tell you that there was only minor vascularity. Here is another example of an ovarian lesion that was less than 10 centimetres in maximum diameter. And this is an adnexal mass. Question 7 is another adnexal lesion. Question eight. This is a mass in the patch of Douglas in a premenopausal woman. Question nine. Is an adnexal mass shown using color Doppler? And lastly, here's another lesion in a premenopausal woman. Here are the answers. In question one, this lesion is unilocular walls, unilocular with regular walls, less than 10 centimeters. So on simple descriptors, this is a cystadenoma. 
Similarly, on simple rules, it was unilocular and there was no flow in the lesion, so it's benign, and it was a serous cystadenoma. This is the lesion in question two. Simple descriptors do not apply, but on simple rules, there were more than four populations and there is shadowing, which makes it difficult to say what this is. It's uncertain on simple rules. And this was a borderline ovarian tumour. On simple descriptors, it's unilocular, there's mixed echogenicity, shadowing in a premenopausal woman, um, and it's also, so that must be a dermoid. On simple rules, it's unilocular, there's shadowing, no vascularity, so it looks benign, and this was a dermoid. In this lesion, simple descriptors do not apply, but on simple rules, it's a smooth, multilocular, less than 10 centimeter lesion, benign, and it was a mucinous cystadenoma. Again here, simple descriptors do not apply. This is a smooth multilocular lesion, less than 10 centimetres. So on simple rules, it's benign. There are no malignant features. And this was a serous cystadenoma. Again here, simple descriptors do not apply. But on simple rules, it's irregular and solid, uh, which is malignant. And this was metastatic colon cancer. This lesion, simple descriptors do not apply. But on simple rules, there was shadowing, a benign feature, and this was a fibroma. On simple descriptors, this is unilocular with ground glass echogenicity in a premenopausal woman, so an endometrioma. On simple rules, it was unilocular with no vascularity, so these are uh, benign, and this was an endometrioma. Question 9. Simple descriptors do not apply. But on simple rules, it's an irregular solid lesion with strong blood flow, so it looks malignant. And this was a serous ovarian carcinoma. In the last one, on simple descriptors, this is a unilocular lesion with mixed echogenicity, shadowing in a premenopausal woman is a dermoid. On simple rules, there's shadowing and no colour, uh, so it looks benign. And this was a mature teratoma or a dermoid. So in conclusion, you should apply IOTA terminology and simple rules to all adnexal masses. Keep a record and chase the histology where you write. You can go from a report that would just say simple or complex to one that uses IOTA criteria to describe the lesion, simple descriptors and simple rules to write a really comprehensive and informative report. You should take a careful history before you scan the patient. Scan systematically and don't panic when there are many separate abnormalities. Then use the IOTA criteria to describe the lesion. Apply simple descriptors, pattern recognition. Apply simple rules. There are also other models that we will talk about later. And then you can write a clear report. Does it look benign, uncertain or malignant? And suggest some histology. And then you should chase the histology to look to see where you write. Uh, this paper from 2013 describes all the different strategies that you can use for diagnosing ovarian cancer. And again, I urge you to read this. Uh, what other resources are there? They're all from IOTA. They have published extensively. They run courses. They have apps which are malignancy risk calculators. Uh, and on their website, you will find dates of their yearly conferences. Thank you.